Hey everybody, Jake here with Jake Wu Market Research to go over the markets into mid-February. And once again this week, we had a very strong move up. Definitely doesn't hurt that Bitcoin finally uh, started to make a move with kind of risk on assets catching a bid once again. And, uh, and really just kind of a lot to talk about today. I have quite a few names, a lot more than usual to go over. Uh, before I jump into it, just wanted to mention I do have a Twitter subscription for $10 a month. That has a lot more information and a lot more details than what this video is going to have. This is just going to be a general overview of uh, quite a few names, ES and Q, uh, RTY, CL on the future side. I'll touch on Bitcoin and then I have about 10 or so individual names to go over. A lot of those names being crypto names just because it's been uh, quite a move this week in the crypto world. So before I jump into ES, I just wanted to mention if you are a futures trader or interested in maybe looking at another futures platform for uh, trading as well as uh, just overall analysis, uh, you can check out Optimus Futures. I have a partnership with them. I do post Optimus Futures charts every day on my Twitter as well as on their Twitter. So uh, if you are looking for just more charts, I do post those in the morning on Optimus Futures Twitter. I'll, I'll include them in the video description to their Twitter profile. And I uh, just wanted to mention that, that you can actually hook them into trading view so you if you still want to use trading view charts but you actually want to trade through them as a broker you can do that so as i mentioned we do have a partnership and as i mentioned again uh or i as i will mention again if you do want more of the daily details and really different levels to watch vwaps gaps and all that definitely check out the twitter subscription it's in the video description as well uh, and it's just right through twitter so ES, we have now had five green weeks in a row after the start of the year was not great, uh, but it was also needed to have a pullback in the start of the year. We had literally nine green weeks in a row, so that's kind of what happens when you go up pretty much straight for two months. You have a little bit of a pullback, and once again, we've gone pretty much straight up over the last five weeks. One thing I'll mention here is we are starting to move up into this trend zone, which has been resistance in the past. Now, there's not a ton of touches on this trend zone, but overall, this is definitely an area to watch. We're kind of grinding up into it. There's actually more room to move up into next week. Uh, the top of this zone into next week goes up to right around 5090. So uh, that is definitely an area you'd want to watch if you are on the future side of things. Uh, for SPY, Qs, IWM, uh, those are all ETFs and uh, details that I provide in the subscription. I don't do any future stuff. That's only in these videos and then in the morning videos that I make, uh, or excuse me, the morning charts that I make for uh, on Optimus Futures. So ES, all in all, I mean, the trend is up. Uh, when does it stop? Who knows? But to try to really short the market at this point, Sure, you could be right, but if you tried to short it the last three, three and a half months, you have definitely had a hard time here. So all in all, we are moving up in, into the diagonal trend zone, but that does not mean that we're going to reverse. It means let's see what happens next week. We've got some important data coming out. Uh, but as I mentioned, you do actually still have room to move up into the zone. And this is why I like to use zones instead of an exact level, because this is when you kind of start saying, okay, we're getting into a potential maybe caution zone uh, because this is kind of a resistant zone that is uh, pretty much starts back from December of 2022. So do we pull back like we did back in July? We'll see. But, you know, that's the thing with these trend zones. We're pretty much connecting the wick of December of 2022 to the wick of July of 2023. Uh, this hasn't really acted as a resistance zone since then. It's just a resistance zone that's been created from connecting these two points. So going into the next few weeks, we'll see if this actually proves to be a resistant zone and, uh, and if we do finally get a pullback, which would probably be a little healthy, but we are starting to see overall, you know, some of these small cap names starting to take off and you're starting to see kind of this rally expanding. NQ, we are actually already breaking out of this resistance zone. So is NQ kind of front running ES? We'll see, but you know, this is the same exact trend zone pretty much that I had on ES, except NQ is broken out. It broke out actually last week. We did try to break out the week of January 22nd, but we did not actually close. We pretty much closed right at the top of this trend zone, but a really strong move up, new all-time highs again this week, 
And if we continue up, the next area to watch is the 2.618 extension. And this is the measured move pretty, this is the extension of the measured move pretty much from the July highs connecting to the October lows of 2023. That's pretty much your measured move for these extensions. That's what they're essentially a function of. We pretty much blew past the 1.618 extension. We pulled back last week right to it. And then we continued up this week and another one, fifth green week in a row. We'll see where we go next week, but all in all, the trend is up and that is something we really cannot deny at this point. And if you were interested in that extension, that 2.618 extension is 1917325. Uh, if you want to just do 19170 to 19180, that's probably a better uh, zone versus just using that exact price level. This is where things get interesting. As I mentioned, small caps are really starting to uh, catch a bid here. And so in a really healthy market, you'd really want to see small caps finally catch a bid. You've got this volume shelf forming. You've pretty much had no action since the start of the year. We're pretty much just consolidating. And so it's been really interesting to see small caps pretty much not move at all while ES and Q are hitting new all-time highs. So the fact that we did close above this volume shelf, the fact that we've been consolidating now for five weeks, this is definitely a potential big upside mover in the coming weeks. And, you know, one, the small cap index and the ETF IWM will likely make a move, but definitely individual names generally make bigger moves, right? They have a higher beta. They're usually the ones you definitely want to keep an eye on. So uh, small caps in general, just individual names as well, definitely should be high on the watch list going into next week. Uh, CPI is next week. That could be either the market front runs that data and we have a huge move up into it, or CPI could be the trigger for a bigger move to the upside going into next week off of this volume shelf. As you know, I like to say, you know, these volume shelves can act as a launch pad for price as we saw in Bitcoin this week. So definitely something to keep in mind. If we did break to the upside, a retest of the highs, pretty much, you know, taking this wick here, connecting it here. So pretty much these highs are anywhere ranging from around 2070 to 2097. So that would be your upside target if we do get a big launch to the upside going into the week ahead. And as I mentioned, I do go over the IWM details in the Twitter subscription uh, with those prices as well. CL, this is oil. You can see another volume shelf launch pad. We had kind of interesting here, right? We had a launch in the week of January 22nd, rejected right at the September 23 pivot VWAP zone, which was the area that we were watching as potential resistance when I did the video last time, which was two weeks ago. And then we, we actually closed a little bit below the shelf and hit a new low on oil this week and then a new low, local low in the last three weeks. And then we bounced right off this volume shelf once again. So if we do have a continued upside move here, it would definitely be an area of interest anywhere from around 78.50 a barrel all the way up to around 80.25, give or take, 80 to 80.25, that general zone. So definitely that is the area you want to watch. This has been very, it's been an area of definitely, uh, you know, I don't want to say predictable resistance, but it's been an area that looked at looked to be the next resistance level and proved to be. So that is definitely the main area you want to watch above. The thing is, though, is look, we have this volume gap above as well. So if oil really starts to take off, you know, we could move up pretty quickly through from, let's say, 79 all the way up to 83 because you just don't have a ton of liquidity here. And that's where prices can really start to uh, move very quickly, as we'll see in some of these crypto charts that we'll go over here shortly. Bitcoin is definitely one to watch going into the coming weeks, pretty much consolidating like IWM, except it was consolidating even longer after the ETF news early in the year. And so the main levels that I'm watching here, pretty much what I'm doing is I'm anchoring the volume profile from the September pivot. You can see here that we just had a ton of consolidation, a lot of accumulation here. That's what essentially creates this volume shelf. And then this volume shelf pretty much acted as just a huge launch pad for price going into uh, really midweek and then into the end of the week. So some big moves in crypto as well as crypto names, miners especially. Going into the weekend, you know, when you do have big pumps like this, you tend to see pretty big moves over the weekend. However, it is worth noting that we've already had a pretty big move this week. So do we have more juice into the weekend? 
We'll just have to see, but we are at this spring 2022 pivot zone, which was also resistance zone back in early January. So really, if we can close above 49,000, I hate to be that guy, 50,000 is definitely your next level, not because it's just $1,000 higher, but that's a psychological level, right? So 50,000 is definitely just an even number. That's, it's kind of like SPY hitting 500. That's just a big milestone. So 50,000 is really going to be an interesting level to see if we just blow uh, blast right through. And if that's the case, you do have the December 2021 pivot zone slightly higher from 52,000 to 52,900. If you want me to zoom out, that's pretty much this general area right here. It actually was resistance back in September of 2021. You then had the move up. You then pretty much had this right shoulder here that was pretty much your pivot zone. And, uh, and so this general area from 52,000 to 52,900 is really the next area to watch above. And uh, really, if you look at some of these volume shelf moves to the upside, these can last a while. It's generally not just one candle. You generally have multiple very big impulse candles to the upside, but I really would like to see a break above the previous highs that we saw in early January to really get even more bullish uh, going into the rest of February. Now, this is the individual names. I really want to touch on these one because this is, you know, these are what are these names are what's moving in the market, but two, just a really good case study on volume gaps and volume shelves. So if you're not familiar with essentially what the volume, well, I use the anchored volume profile, but the volume profile in general is pretty much measuring volume and how many shares have essentially aggregated at different prices since a specific point in time. So I'm starting the anchor point from the October pivot because this is really where the status quo changed. This is where you had capitulation. This is kind of where the market reset. So I wanna measure volume from where the market reset. And so going into this week, you could see that we had a lot of volume here. This is kind of this volume shelf, right? This aggregation of shares that kind of creates a base for price. A very strong move through the volume, uh, off the volume shelf through the volume gap right to the next level of supply. So I call this supply because imagine if you bought Mara up here in, in early January, you dealt with a drawdown or almost a 50% drawdown. So as you get back to your break even price, this is where you may take some off the table. This is why I call it break even supply because this is essentially where people who were underwater are now back to break even. And generally, if you've dealt with a big drawdown and you get back to break even, sometimes you're like, "Woo, that was brutal. Let's take some off the table or let's just get fully out of this. You know, I'm emotionally scarred, whatever, whatever the thought process is for that particular trader. So this is why these areas can act as resistance, because you essentially have this supply coming on the market from people who are essentially back to break even. So notice that there's not a ton of supply here, right? If you're thinking about this as an analogy, think about football, right? Super Bowls this weekend. If you're a runner and you get through the initial line of all the defensemen, you kind of don't have a lot of people to tackle you. So then you can speed up, right? There's not a lot of, there's nothing really stopping you from speeding up and moving, you know, down the field. Well, this is essentially getting through, this volume shelf is kind of getting through that initial line and then kind of being able to speed up and run until pretty much you get to the next defenseman. And so this is, if you wanna make an analogy uh, around football, this volume shelf essentially is your next line of you know, defensemen, you know, the people who are kind of in the backfield that are ready to uh, potentially stop you from running. So that will slow you down. That's essentially the way I look at it. Uh, it's, it's kind of like if, you're just get, if you get through a gap in football, you speed up, you see the runner speed up very quickly. That's because you don't have a lot of friction. And that's exactly how prices work in the market when they go through these volume gaps. I do, uh, one thing I was going to mention, I do cover this daily in the subscription. Uh, this, this is something that, you know, is pretty straightforward. If you look at the, the break even supply zone here, it's right around 23, 25, all the way up to around 24, 25. If we get above that, then we could definitely test the highs here. And as I mentioned, you know, this is something that I did touch on uh, in a lot more detail in the subscription. And uh, it's just, uh, you know, I don't want to make this video an hour, so I won't touch on too many details on these charts. Just go over them, uh, kind of a broad overview. So that is Mara. Riot here is our next setup. Another one that just moves with Bitcoin. It's definitely a Bitcoin proxy. So when Bitcoin moves, you generally have this move even more. 
And uh, that's exactly what it did. We had this inverse head and shoulders here actually forming the last couple of weeks. You, uh, you know, it's almost a perfectly symmetrical inverse head and shoulders. It's pretty sweet uh, just to see how the market really just forms these patterns. Same thing though, volume shelf turns into a launch pad. What happens? Well, we pretty much go straight through this volume gap. We started to move up towards this next break even supply zone. That pretty much ranges from around 1475 all the way up to around 1575. So around a dollar above. So there is a little room before we get to the top of that area. This, this volume node right around 1575 would be the top of that. If we can get above that, definitely the previous highs are in play anywhere from around 1850 all the way up to around 2085. And if you are wondering why I use zones instead of exact prices, well, one, that's not how the market works. Two, you can use zones as a scaling technique, right? If you get to the bottom of a zone and you've got a big position that you just made a bunch of money on, maybe as price gets to the bottom of the zone, that's when you scale out a third. When you get to the middle of the zone, maybe that's when you scale out another third. When you get to the top of the zone, maybe that's when you scale out completely. Everybody's going to have their own strategy, but that's kind of the way you can use zones essentially as a scaling tool. So at the bottom of the trend zone or at the bottom of the horizontal zone, maybe I take some off the table. And then from there, you know, you can, uh, you can do whatever you want, but that's, that's kind of the idea of how to use these zones is more of a tool for scaling in and scaling out. And it works on both the upside and the downside. CLSK, this thing had an absolute massive move. One Bitcoin did well Two, they had good earnings and it was up over 30% on the day on Friday. That's when I do these videos. So the main thing you know, to focus on here is this previous pivot area, pretty much from March of 2022, you had this area of resistance once again in late December. And so naturally, this is going to be an area where price has memory, right? People remember, oh, last time we were at this level, there was resistance. And that's what kind of creates a self-fulfilling prophecy as resistance, at least initially. So we literally closed slightly, slightly above it. You can't even really see it on the chart, but slightly, pretty much right at the top of this pivot zone. I have 1390, but I mean, if, if I double click on this, what is it? 1391. So uh, technically we did close above it. We did break above it intraday, but we did not have a weekly close really above that area, at least visually. So all in all, a very strong candle. I definitely don't think this is one that's going to have a problem continuing up in the coming weeks, especially if Bitcoin can continue up in crypto in general. But I definitely would like to see some price action uh, and, and more activity above this area to really trigger the next move up, which is the previous pivot from November of 2021. And that ranges from 2185 all the way to 2360. So that would be, you know, almost what, 70 to 80% higher from where it is currently. And remember, I don't, I don't really like to use the volume profile like this uh, because, you know, we're pretty much kind of near the top of where I'm anchoring it from. I'm essentially starting the volume profile from the November 21 pivot. But notice there's literally no volume here at all. Nothing. So there is a lot of thin air for price to move up here. I mean, literally there is zero volume here. And so usually we'll get that, not like this, this is kind of crazy, but you usually will get that when you have big moves to the downside, right? So these candles here, you pretty much just moved on very low volume to the downside. And you can see that because there is no volume here within that price level. So if you want to see that kind of visually, if I just take this arrow from where those candles are, there's literally nothing. You can see very, very small volume nodes here. And so that means that there's not a lot of overhead supply for price to get through if we continue to move to the upside. Coinbase, this had a very nice move. And one thing that's really interesting here is one, if you use the Williams percent range in general, it's, it, you know, it's, not, it's not the best indicator used by itself, but I do always find these types of setups interesting where you have a nice move down from overbought down to oversold and you start to tick up again. This shows that we definitely have more upside here to potentially go, uh, you know, to the previous highs from around 187.40 all the way up to around 206.80, which was previous resistance back in March of 2022. So all in all, the main thing that I wanted to focus on here is the fact that we have this bar for the weekly candle here for 
the week that we just had, takes out the entire range of the last three weeks. So what does that mean? It means that the low of this week was lower than the past three weeks, and the high of this week was higher than the past three weeks. So if I wanted to show this visually, you'll pretty much see that this engulfs the entire price action over the last three weeks. So that is pretty impressive and definitely an indication that we have a pretty big reversal in the market here. And if you see here, this is a great example of SR flips. Previous resistance from August of 2022, as well as July of 2023, pretty much flipped back to support after we broke out in late November. We pulled back, we retested the top of the zone, and then we continued up. Very good case study on SR flips. And SR flip pretty much just means support resistance flip. Either support becomes resistance or resistance becomes support after price either broke out or broke down. NVIDIA, this thing is just a machine. I mean, if we go and look probably in 10, 20 years, this is going to be the poster child of the AI boom. And who knows, will it be, will end up being like 2000, like the dot-com bubble? Uh, we'll see. Doesn't really matter. All that matters right now is that price is going up and it's nearing the 2.618 extension, which is a function of the measured move that starts from the November 2021 highs all the way down to the October 2022 lows. And we pretty much had, what was that? Like five months of just price could not get above this 1.618 extension. So this is just, this just proves how strong these extensions are. Uh, and 1.618, 2.618, pretty much anything that's a 0.618 extension becomes kind of a self-fulfilling prophecy because so many people are looking at these areas because there's nothing else to look at to the left. When price is hitting new all-time highs, you have nothing else to reference other than these extensions. So, you know, Fibonacci extensions, you know, some people, I honestly used to think they were just complete nonsense until somebody really showed me how well the market respects these areas. And pretty much anytime the market hits new all time highs or a stock is hitting new all time highs, the 0.618 extensions are all that I use. And uh, right now, this 2.618 extension above is at 732.10. And we'll see what uh, happens going into the week ahead if we blast right through that add the 3.618 extension. What you can also do is you can use the daily chart and get an extension from a different measured move and that will give you, you know, secondary targets and and because if you look at the 3.8 extension here or the 0.618 extension, uh 3.618 extension, that's way up here at 970. So you're definitely going to have areas on the daily chart that are a little a little less uh, frothy for upside moves than uh, 970. That would just be insane. And honestly, I've never seen a stock with this big of a market cap move like this. You know, you've definitely seen back in the day when Tilray and you know, GameStop, those stocks moved, but they were, they were not massive companies. This is a $1.7 trillion plus dollar market cap. And for price to just move like this is absolutely insane and, and pretty fascinating to see play out over the last really pretty much since the beginning of the year. All right, Tesla. This is one that I have really been focusing on since earnings. Earnings, you did have an interesting move to the downside. Not shocking because earnings in general, that's just what happens. You have crazy moves. The charts definitely don't have as much weight going into earnings for any setup, but you know, generally, once the dust settles, you want to kind of see what's the next move. And right now, to me, and let me kind of show you guys the thesis here. And this is the same thing that we've been going over over the other charts. Volume gaps, volume shelves, very simple. It's not, you know, it's not rocket science here. This is not really hard to understand. Pretty much anytime you have these volume nodes, pretty much these areas that are sticking out to the left, that means there's more volume essentially that has aggregated here. And that's what creates a base for price. So as price is kind of trading within this area, especially when you get a weekly close above the volume shelf. Technically, we didn't get above the volume shelf last week. We had the flush at the beginning of the week, and then we actually had a pretty strong candle. You generally will move very quickly through these volume gaps. This volume gap pretty much starts from around 189 and goes all the way up to right around 212. And on top of that, the January 2023 reversal VWAP, pretty much the volume weighted average price since we reversed in January of 2023, is also right at 212. So I'm just going to say 212 to 213. 
I would not be shocked at all if we make that move literally in one week, just because there's not a lot of liquidity up here. So price can move very quickly. People are looking for names that really are lagging or haven't moved yet. And that is exactly Tesla, right? Tesla has just done nothing. People are trying to find value. They're not trying to chase. And Tesla is just a really good candidate for a potential move, especially if interest rates continue to go down, if CPI comes in uh, less, less than expected. Tesla in general is pretty sensitive to interest rates. So if we can get some support on the interest rate side of things into next week, I would not be shocked at all to see literally a move straight up to this 212 area, give or take one, maybe two weeks. This is what happens. I mean, if we go back tomorrow, right, you have literally one candle that can move through the entire volume gap. And so that's why I'm really just thinking, okay, one, we've got the volume shelf. We've got the volume gap. We've got the Williams percent range here that has been printing divergence over the last few weeks. It's still oversold. Generally, when you have the, the Williams percent range oversold like this, once it starts to move back above oversold territory, you generally get a pretty strong move to the upside. You can see that here. You can see that here. You can see that here. All of these times where the Williams percent range was, was oversold, you had moves to the upside. Now, here's a case study on when it doesn't work. When you're in a massive downtrend like this, Notice how the Williams percent range will really just kind of bounce a little bit, come down, bounce a little bit, come down. Are we potentially there? Maybe, but we're in a completely different interest rate environment that we were in going into 2023. Interest rates in the Fed have really, uh, interest rates in general have come down, at least from where they were on the highs, and the Fed is seeming to be more accommodative and actually considering cutting rates in the future. So we are in a different status quo than what we were in this big downtrend that we saw in 2022. So as always, there's nothing guaranteed in the market. All you can do is look at previous times something has happened and really get an idea of, okay, is this a high probability setup? For me, yes. Williams percent range oversold as it was in the previous reversal since the January 23 reversal. You have a very large volume shelf here that price respected and moved and closed above. You have a bullish engulfing candle on the weekly candle chart, and you have this volume gap where price can move very quickly. I think it's a recipe for a pretty quick move to the upside, and I do have the bull thesis trigger and all of that in the subscription that I went over on the in the weekend update for subscribers. As I mentioned, if you are interested in the subscription, just go to the video description and it is there. All right, next one, Apple. Ascending triangle here forming on the weekly candle chart. You can see here that we do have an inside bar. A lot of the time inside bars are pretty neutral setups. You either wanna see a break and close above the previous candles high or break and close below the previous candles low, kind of for your next trigger. So in this case, we're pretty neutral here, but price is holding at this ascending triangle support. So the fact that we are holding at this area definitely is better than not holding at this area. But if you really look at Apple since July, we have not really done anything. We hit slightly new highs back in December, but all in all, just not a lot of action here. It seems like Apple's kind of getting dethroned a little bit, but who knows, maybe we're just consolidating for a massive move to the upside. But when you have such a big market cap like Apple, it's just not as easy to have moves like you're seeing in these crypto names and NVIDIA. I mean, NVIDIA is a huge market cap, but it's Apple's still, you know, a little less than twice the size of NVIDIA, at least at this point. Um, so, you know, do we get a move to the upside? Definitely some things on the daily chart that are suggesting that. As I mentioned, I did touch on this as well on the Twitter subscription for upside targets and kind of the thesis on this one for a potential upside as well as invalidation because you can get invalidation pretty much on any setup that you have. Nothing is guaranteed in the market. This is all probabilities. AMD is another interesting one. Very interesting considering NVIDIA moved up, SMCI moved up, but AMD pulled back. It pulled back right to the SR flip zone, this previous all-time highs from November of 2021. We finally broke out of them in mid-January, pulled back, have retested the top of the zone now three weeks in a row. 
Definitely not the best looking candle here on the weekly chart, but if you zoom into the daily chart, definitely some better looks there. And you've got a lot of consolidation over the last couple, uh, week and a half, two weeks, pretty much since earnings after that uh, kind of moved to the downside. And we've just been more or less consolidating. And uh, this is one where, yes, the daily looks decent, but if you really want some confluence of the daily and the weekly, this weekly candle just doesn't have as much of a confirmation, but that doesn't really mean anything because look, last time we had a candle that looked almost exactly like this, what do we do? We just gapped up and went straight up. So you can't really look at candles like this and interpret too much. This is where you really wanna go into the lower time frame, like the daily chart and uh, get a better idea. And that's something that I touched on in detail as well in the weekend update in the subscription. SMCI, this is kind of a technician's just worst nightmare. I don't want to say worst nightmare, but you really have nothing to, to go off here. All you have to do is just add another 0.618 extension once you break the next one. And when you've gone pretty much straight up and you're at all-time highs, you have no gaps to reference. You have no VWAPs to reference. You have no moving averages to reference. No previous resistance or support zones to reference because when you go straight up, you don't really have any of that. So right now... There's not a lot to go off of here other than the fact that we broke above the 3.618 extension. We closed above it on the weekly chart. The next extension is the 4.618 extension at 828.82. And this is a name that does not have a big market cap at all. So this is one that actually could just continue to move up because it's really, you know, minuscule compared to NVIDIA, AMD. I think the market cap here... I'm not in this. I don't know the exact market cap. I know earlier in the week it was, you know, in the 30s. I don't know, 40 to 50 billion. Don't quote me on that because I don't have it in front of me uh, just because we're up another 6% today. But this is definitely not in the hundreds of billions of market cap. Let's just put it that way. And I'm not going to sit here and remember exactly what that market cap is at the end of close day, but it's definitely nowhere near the size of some of these other names that have made even the same moves. So, SMCI for now, the trend is up. If people are shorting this, you know, they're continuing to just get absolutely destroyed here on the move to the upside. And maybe that's what's fueling this a little bit, or maybe it's just a little bit of euphoria and just mania around AI. And, uh, you know, these things can uh, continue up a lot longer than people can remain solvent. If you remember that quote from someone very famous. All right, PLTR, another case study on volume gaps and break-even supply. So this is one that finally made a move. It's about time. This thing's been pretty much stuck now in a range-bound form for about seven months. Earnings finally kicked off the next move to the upside. And look at here. What happened? Well, we had a volume shelf here, which I should have highlighted. Okay, make this green because that's generally bullish when we have a volume shelf that looks like that. So volume shelf forming, huge launch off the volume shelf, literally one candle. That's all it took to go through this volume gap. You did not have a lot of liquidity. You didn't have a lot of friction. You didn't have a lot of people that were selling at break even until you got to this general area here. This is your break even supply zone. This is essentially exactly where we found resistance this week. And this is where price is likely going to consolidate. Now, if we do get a weekly candle close above the top of this break-even supply zone, what happens? This essentially becomes your volume shelf, another potential launch pad because price is now above that area. As long as price is below a volume node like this or below a shelf, it's going to act as supply. Once price is above it, then it is no longer a supply zone and that's what can really create a base for the next move up. And uh, really just fascinating to see this candle literally just go straight through the volume gap right to the next area of liquidity, which is this break-even supply zone. If we do break to the upside and close above, you know, the top of this area around 2565, you know, just look to your left, right? We don't need extensions. We already have price action to reference. This area in general, pretty much the highs from September of 2021, that ranges anywhere from around 2840 all the way to around 2930. So that would be your next upside target if we do break and close above this break even supply zone. All right, that was a lot of talking and a lot of information. Hopefully this was helpful in getting another perspective in the market going into the week ahead. As I mentioned, if you do want more detailed written analysis and more, you know, very 
detailed information on prices, VWAPs, gaps above, below for a lot of these names that we just went over. Definitely check out the Twitter subscription. It's literally 33 cents a day. Uh, it's very affordable for anybody who wants to just get another perspective, you know, get a menu of setups that then you take and formulate into your own trade. You know, the way I look at my subscription is, you know, kind of like a fishing guide, right? I'm the fishing guide. I'm telling you, hey, this lake may be a good place to go throw your pole in, go uh, maybe get some bites, but I am not the one throwing the line out and fishing for you. I'm telling you, hey, this may be a good place to go uh, take a gander and see if there's any fish biting there. And then you are the one who formulates these ideas and these setups into your own trade. There's a million different ways to trade. And that's really what I focus on is not hand feeding people and what to buy, when to buy, when to sell. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm just giving these setups where you can take it and say, hey, okay, last time I played this, this worked out well for me. And then you choose, do I trade shares? Do I trade options? Do I do some type of spread? That's where it becomes personalized to you. And that's where you take that idea and take it from there. And uh, then everybody's happy. You know, I don't want to, I don't want to be thanked for making somebody money because that means I'm going to be blamed if they lose money. So this is all really just ideas, another perspective for you to take and, uh, and add it to your overall market research. So hopefully this video was helpful. As I mentioned, uh, I do have a, a partnership with Optimus Futures, so definitely check them out. I'll have the link in the video description. If you have any questions or comments, just feel free to comment below. I also have my DMs open on Twitter. You can send me a DM there as well. Everybody have a great weekend. Thanks for listening, and I hope this video was helpful. And uh, I think I'm going to have to say go Chiefs this weekend. I think I'm going to have to place a little bet on the Chiefs. Have a good one.